Hey, it's Colin Shadwell back for another YouTube video on throwing pottery on the wheel. So this time I'm going to be uh, making a rather large vase. This was kind of a end of a day of throwing here, and I'd, I'd made some bowls that I wasn't too happy with and had one more piece of clay, so I thought I'd go back to making what I like to make, which are pretty large vases. So you can see I'm spreading this one out pretty wide. I'm going to do nice big pulls here. That first pull I do is kind of one I've done before with uh, with when I have large pieces. I do more of a, a, a pinch. So I put my fingers on the inside and my thumb on the outside and do these large pulls because I'm really trying to get a lot of clay up the very first pull. The more clay you can get up on the first pulls, the better. That's It kind of gives you more height. So if I can get the clay up high fast and in the first few pulls, it lets me really do nice these little side-to-side -side finger pulls at the end. Uh, more easily. So as you can see, I'm getting a lot of height here. Got to readjust my camera there because I'm getting so tall that I had to move the camera back. So um, I really don't know what shape I was going for here. I was just kind of getting height and then I'll just kind of go through and decide later on. So since I had a wide base, I thought I'd just pull it out wide at the bottom and then kind of do a little flat at the top. Nothing really special here on this one. The shape's just kind of pretty average. Um, and then I'll try to figure out later on what I'm going to do with it. So I kind of had a lot of success before with those uh, teapots that I did where I, I would cut away a piece of the teapot and then uh, put a slab in the position where it was before and then add pieces back. So I think I was going to do that with this one as well. So once this becomes somewhat leather hard, I'll come back in here and, and try to shave away the parts that uh, I don't want and try to smooth it all out. You can see the, the rim is a little wobbly, which again, um, you, can, you can get rid of some of that with carving like this. But when it's still, you don't really notice. It's just because it's going so fast right now. Um, and it's hard too with the, with these big pieces that the tops tend to dry a lot faster than the bottom so you have to kind of let them dry slowly um, now because I'm doing cutouts of these I have to kind of speed it up a little bit because if I let it dry too far then I wouldn't be able to cut pieces out of it um, so the, the bottom is probably more uh, wet than I want it to be but um, as long as I'm careful I can get to the shape I want so uh, of course I'm using my typical chatter tool on the top and now I'm here with my hacksaw blade, and I'm kind of doing just a, an abstract, just cutting out a, a slice, uh, and then coming back in here and filling it back in with the slab. So um, I kind of wanted this one, you, you got to be careful, because this one started to sag just a little bit. It's, you, you can't notice it while it's happening, but as I'm just messing around with it, you can see when, I'm, when I spin it again uh, at the very end that it's got a little bit of wobble to it, which again, you can't tell when it's holding still, but uh, for this one, you know, because I, I cut a, a huge second out of it, it just sags a little bit, but not too bad. Um, plenty of slip on both of them. I've really learned that if I if I use lots of slip and just go ahead and score the heck out of the backside, um, it makes for a, a much smoother connection that I can uh, make a cleaner connection later on once I kind of cut away all this stuff. So this one was nice because I could get my hand down in the vase and actually uh, smush these guys together to make a nice tight connection. And then coming in here and just cutting away as much as I can while leaving just a little bit that I can come back later on and smush into the side of the walls. Because again, uh, I've had pieces in the past that have that have cracked along this seam, but if I if I leave enough on the edge where I can come in and smush and kind of blend them together and get a, a nice tight seam that way, and then come back once it's dried and use my sure form to to smooth it all out so it looks like it's part of the original piece, it works a lot better. So um, I've got my slab in the way I want it here. You can see I've taken the piece that uh, I cut out, and now I'm going to just do some random abstract shapes, cutting out some pieces. And then wherever I, uh, wherever it would touch the edge, I have to cut a piece off because again, when you put the slab in, it makes the uh, the the hole bigger. So you gotta you gotta cut. You can see I'm cutting pieces up the top and bottom here so that it actually fit inside the piece. Otherwise, it wouldn't fit. And then uh, I decided it could use some more negative space if that's possible, and I start using my hole cutter and put some holes in these two. See, so I take these guys back off and add some holes onto this. And then come back and put some holes in this one. Now these pieces obviously need to be leather hard. You know they're they're probably just a little bit wetter than I want, but they're not too bad. They'll they'll hold up their own. They won't bend or or um, distort when I'm doing this. So taking a sponge now because it's so much easier now to clean these guys up uh, than it is when they're already on there. Um, I've got this little groove uh, tool that I can put on here that will put little edges. So I've just decided just to give these little decorative edges as well. Um, putting some little lines in. I don't know, just a little freeform stuff that. Uh, I thought it might kind of add a little decorative element to this just to try something new. And then once I have it where I want it, I'll come back in here and line it up again and start putting them back into place. So this process does not take very long. Um, obviously, it's very quick when you speed it up, but I'd say maybe 
once I cut the piece, it's probably another 30 minutes before I have it all back together again. Then it's just a matter of waiting to let the whole thing dry out so I can smooth it out with the shear form so it kind of blends back together. So um, adding these pieces back in, again, plenty of slipping and scoring and then really trying to get a nice tight, really pressing it in, which also helps when these guys are leather hard, they, they don't distort when you press in too badly. So um, making sure I get a nice tight fit and that way I won't get any cracking or any seams when I'm uh, letting it dry. Plenty of slip in there. And then after I've cleaned the whole thing up, you can see here that it's got a little wobble to it, but nothing too bad. But still, it turned out to be a nice smooth piece on one side. These little decorative elements I like a lot as well. Um, so this should be a nice tight piece when it finishes drying, and I can glaze it up in a variety of ways. So hope you enjoyed watching this uh, piece, and come back and watch some more.